Okay, so it looks like we're live. Okay, so um, the slides part of this is going to be hopefully very short um, because uh, some of some people have like experience with rods already, and then also the concepts are actually very simple. And then uh, hopefully the meat of it is that we have a like a little programming uh, exercise that will help you sort of get started and get a feel for ROS. Um, okay, so let's start with uh, what's ROS. So if you look on the ROS website, or they often describe themselves as being a combination of a few things. Um, so one is that is what they call plumbing. So they offer um, uh, an architecture for how to structure your programs and how these things can communicate with each other over networks and stuff like that. Uh, we'll, we'll see more about that. Uh, they offer a bunch of tools. So they have visualization tools, um, tools for inspecting the state of the system, and so on. Um, and then probably uh, one of the more, more important things is that they have, uh, they're, they're all about promoting open source uh, code and code reuse. And so there's a lot of existing code out there. And so if you wanted to do, if you wanted to have a robot that could do some capability, you can just sort of um, get up and running with it within, you know, like like an hour or so. Um, instead of writing like how how to make a robot navigate a room or how to map a map a space or how to do voice recognition, like you don't need to write a lot of this stuff yourself because it's out there, and that allows you to put these things together and get like a, a functional robot going as quickly as possible. Okay, so talk about um, how to how a ROS uh, system is structured. So um, there's a network. Basically, um, you can think of it as a network of nodes. Each node does like some particular, uh, like a small piece of computation. Um, and and the way to think about a node is that it's basically an executable file. So it could be like a single Python file or a single uh, C++ binary. So it's some executable file. But uh, all the nodes actually communicate with each other, and they communicate with each other over uh, TCP. TCP IP. Um, even if they're on the same computer, they'll actually communicate over TCP. So this this and and it provides a simple way for you to do this. So you don't have to write like networking code yourself. You don't have to worry about how they're going to communicate with each other. Um, and then the way the the abstractions that Roz offers in terms of how to get nodes to talk to each other are topics and services. So those are the two things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, one thing that you probably want to know about is um, the ROS master. So the ROS master is a special entity in ROS, which basically stores information about the network um, and all the nodes. So when you write a ROS node, um, you're going to use the ROS library. And then the library, uh, when it starts up, it's going to register itself with the ROS master. Um, and it basically tells it, uh, you know, what's my uh, where where can I be found? Like, what's my IP address? What's my what port number am I at? Um, and basically, the master is just a registry of all these nodes. So when another node comes by and asks, like, oh, like, where can I find node A? Right? Um, the master will tell you, oh, node A is like located over here. Right? <laughs> and then from then on, nodes A and B will communicate over a peer to peer connection um, instead of instead of going to the ROS master. So that's just another thing. And then, um, so often you have like multiple nodes running on a single computer. Like if you're just developing something on your laptop, you might have like three or five or like 15 nodes on your computer. But nodes can also span across different computers. So you can have, so for example, um, our robot uh, is basically like a computer on wheels. So it has like uh, two Ubuntu Linux computers on it and then are you know you can have a program where some nodes are running on the laptop some nodes are running on the robot and they communicate with each other over the network um, so just to go through like maybe another example of like a simplified version of what a robotics system might be like uh, in terms of nodes um, you can have like um, a self-driving car uh, which is you, know, you can also think of it as like a computer on wheels uh, and also people. Um, so it has like maybe a variety of sensors, like uh, it has a camera and a GPS, which tells it where it is, how to stay inside the lines. Um, 
And then you might also have like something like um, like a map server, which uh, gives you information about what the roadways are like. Um, and this can be located someplace that's not on the car, right? It could be located in the cloud somewhere, and you just have to request uh, map tiles as you drive around. Um, then you can have um, so so basically when you when you're writing a camera node, for example, you're basically like like reading in like raw like sensor data from the camera, and then you can basically provide the images to along some topics. So these arrows sort of represent uh, topics or like lines of communication. Um, so the next thing is probably the most interesting part is the path planner, which is kind of like the AI of the car, which tells it how, how to move in response to the sensor data. So again, it, it you don't have to worry when you're writing the path planner about um, how to get the location or um, or about getting the camera images, because other nodes do that for you. Right? So you just assume that you get a camera image and a GPS location, and then given that, you can output like some path, um, and then these bottom examples are like, um, you know, maybe like your left wheel controller is just a simple forward or backward. So if you want to turn left, let's say you're on a robot that only has two wheels, then actually going left, like the left wheel needs to go backwards and the right wheel needs to go forward. But if you want to go straight ahead, then they both go forward or something. So, anyways, your locomotion planner can can figure that out. Or if you want to turn left in an arc then the left wheel turns more slowly and the right wheel turns faster, like that. Um, so you can take the process of just figuring out how to do that and just put that in its own node. So um, the more singular the task that the node does, uh, the better, probably. So, um, OK, so now um, the modes of communication. So nodes can basically expose um, two uh, basic kinds of APIs. So the first is. Uh, topic. It can take a topic in and uh, and output on a topic. So when you take when you read in from a topic, you're subscribed to this topic. And if you uh, are sending data out on a topic, then you're publishing to it. And um, these are basically you can think of them as streams of data. It could happen like periodically, like it could be a clock tick, or it could be like a video is like basically getting like an image every like 30 times a second. So it can be very consistent. But it can also be very inconsistent, like um, like your email, for example. Imagine if you published something uh, every time you got an email. That would then, you know, maybe at night you wouldn't get any at all, but in the afternoon you would get a bunch or something like that. And then the way that a topic is identified is that it's just a string. It's just some name that it has. Um, so we have to take care to not collide with your names. Um, the other the other way in which um, nodes can communicate with each other is called services. So services are what what you might be more familiar with actually, because they're more they're basically like function calls uh, or remote procedure calls if you use those. So it's like you call it with a you give it a request and then you get a response back, right? So this is kind of like a web server, for example, it might offer a service where you make a request for a web page and then it sends you a web page back. Um, so this is different from topics because topics are like uh, a continual stream, and then um, um, so so you can have like many many different people publishing onto the same topic, and then those messages will just be in whatever order they were published. And so you have no way if you are subscribed to a topic, and let's say um, you know person A sends me a message and person B sends me a message, um, I don't necessarily know whether person A sent me the message or person B sent me the message. I just know that I got a message on this topic. Um, so, so services, on the other hand, allow you to establish like that one-on-one -on -one communication with each person. You know, like this guy sent me a request, I'm gonna send him a response. And, and, and vice versa. So and services are also uniquely identified as just using a string. It's just you just give it some name. Okay, so let's think about um, how you might um, go through like what kind of API each part of this self-driving car might expose. So um, your camera, um, it clearly is getting input like from the world um, in the form of like light or whatever, but it's not, there's no like topic in which you're getting that in. But it could publish the image that it sees onto a topic for other people to use. Um, GPS, again, like 
um, all, all the sensors really aren't going to have any data that comes from ROS. Like, it's going to get its data from the world, right? So the GPS, in that case, is like it's coming from a satellite or something like that. Um, but you can publish your current location continuously um, onto a topic. Now, um, roadmap server. So just the word server is kind of a hint that you're maybe providing a service. Um, so here, maybe like you can only get like a small piece of the roadmap at a time because the world is really big. And so um, as you drive around, you might want to get the next tile that you're about to enter. And that could be a service uh, in response. Um, and the path planner, again, it takes in two topics, the camera and the GPS. And then it can maybe output like some direction or uh, maybe like a vector to move in. And then the locomotion planner can take in a direction to move in and then output like how to turn the wheels uh, in the form of left direction and right direction. Um, OK, so let's skip that. And then I think this is actually the last slide. But basically, um, so ROS supports uh, C++, Python as its primary languages. But then there is also some support for other languages like Java, Lisp, Lua, maybe like I, I don't know, but the main ones, the only ones that we use here are C plus plus and Python, pretty much. Maybe Java for, for Android stuff, but um, so so the question is like, how do you transfer data between like C plus plus and Python? Well, there's um, it's basically a language agnostic representation, like called called messages, which uh, ROS is defined. So they have their own like kinds of structured data that you can have, and then um, when you build your code. It will create uh, C++ and Python classes uh, automatically based on the message definition that you provide. So you'll, you'll see a, an example of that. Um, OK, so I think that's actually the last um, slide. So um, hopefully we can, we can spend a bit of time on uh, trying out this programming exercise, or at least getting a flavor for how um, programming works in ROS. Um, OK, so first thing is that um, I've set up um, my computer with a bunch of uh, accounts for you. So basically, what you need to do is to, oh, I, I guess I'll just do it here. But um, OK, so so first of all, who here is on uh, Windows? You're on Windows? OK, so if you're on Windows, um, you'll need to download some kind, of, uh, some kind of program that can do SSH. So if you already have one, then that's good. If you don't already have one, then just download something like Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. If you search for it, um, it should come up as like the first uh, thing, basically. Um, OK, and if you're on Mac or Linux, then um, you're in luck, because you should already have the SSH program. So in that case, um, Follow along with me. So this, this is like way too small. OK, yeah. Let me increase this size. Is this better? Yeah. Anyone read it? OK. OK, so um, here you are. OK, wait, sorry. Um, OK, so if you have. Um, Putty, then basically um, it's going to ask you to log in. Actually, can I just see an example? Oh, OK. Yeah, OK. So um, basically, what you should do is that the host name is going to be wally.cs.washington.edu. Oh, it's and then if there's a username field somewhere, let me know if you see a username field. Oh, I'm the CS. OK, I'll, I'll type out the commands for those of you using uh, Linux or Mac. Um, but OK, so basically the host name, if you see a host name field, it should be wally.cs.washington.edu. And then if there's a username field somewhere, then, um, then the username should be hcrlab. Uh, now, if you're on um, Mac or Linux, then you just type in this command directly. So can you guys 
You guys got it? Okay, so it's asking for a password? Okay, so now your password um, is written on this whiteboard in very thin. Is that readable? It's all it's all one word. Space. The capital M. I I'm recording. It's all lowercase. Okay, so um, let me know. Have you logged in? I can. No, uh, you need to type in HCR Lab at Wally. Yeah. Everyone else is logged in. Okay, so for those of you um, who who just came in today, um, let's say if you type in LS, you'll see there's a bunch of um, UW Net IDs. So um, just add uh, your own UW Net ID by typing uh, mkdir and then whatever your, your UW Net ID is. I think, I think I already made one for you. I already made one for like a bunch of people, but if you don't already have it, great, perfect. Um, okay, so now um, go to yours. Okay, so. We're going to talk more about um, the build system that we use and for raw stuff, but um, it's called Catkin. And so um, we're going to go through the basic steps for how to do this, so how to use Catkin, um, but not in any particular detail. Yeah. What's a build system? Oh, uh, good question. Yeah, so uh, what's a build system? So um, you, when you've written code, it's not, uh, you know, you can't just run code, you have to compile it first, or possibly, um, or in Python, you, you don't actually have to compile it, but uh, you, but raw is still, um, there's still some steps that you need to take before you can run your code, so the build system takes care of those steps. So an example of a step um, for Python and C++ is uh, if you write a message definition, it's, you're really writing an abstract uh, representation of how your data should be structured, but it's not yet, uh, but there's no like real concrete implementation of it yet. So you'll still need to build your code in order to build those uh, concrete representations first. Um, okay, so the basic, the, the easy steps to get started uh, is to say um, make dir p catkin workspace slash source. And uh, what this does is that it creates a uh, two folders creates Catkin workspace, and then it creates Catkin workspace slash source. Um, OK, then after that, just say CD Catkin workspace. Everyone good? OK, perfect. Then just say Catkin underscore make. I, that shouldn't have scrolled. Okay, um, catkin underscore make. Cool. Um, okay, so before we go any further, um, if you want to know where we're getting these magical commands from, uh, you'll you'll definitely want to have this open as we go through this further. But um, if you go to wiki.ros.org slash ros slash tutorials, um, at some point you'll want to go through uh, all of these to like really learn like uh, what all the commands are. But uh, for now, we're just we're just getting started. So. Okay, well, or or just search for Roz Wiki, so you can, you can find it. Um, 
OK, so now that uh, we have a CatKin workspace, you'll see that there is something called, uh, if you're in your CatKin workspace and you see um, build, devel, source, so these are the build and devel folders used to not be there. Um, they are there now because you ran cat can make. So one thing that you should do um, is type in source slash devel slash bash, uh, this command down here at the bottom. Um, so Roz works in Ubuntu, and it makes heavy use of uh, environment variables to do stuff. And so um, this, when you when you type in source devel slash setup dot bash, this will set uh, some environment variables that make uh, Roz work. It it sets the uh, environment variables that make your Catkin workspace kind of like the like active. It kind of makes it active, I guess. Like I I'm not really sure how else to describe it, um, but you'll you'll get the hang of it. Um, and since um, these environment variables don't last, like if you create a new terminal you won't have those environment variables. So in every new terminal you open, you're going to have to type in source devel slash setup dot bash in every one of them. Yeah. Um, yes. In, in this case, uh, it, it, it just matters that you source um, this file. So you can be anywhere in your file system. Your current directory can be anywhere as long as you source this file. OK, so if you've done that, um, then you should get nothing. Nothing should happen. So, um, OK, so now um, let's go to the source directory. And you should see there's just a cmakelist.txt in there. So, and then um, now if you go to github.com slash hcr lab, you can find our code. So, this is real ROS programming where you're taking code that you've downloaded off the internet, and then you're going to use it. So, <laughs> um, although actually it's not going to work. So, okay. So everyone, find this GitHub.com/slash HCR Lab. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So click on Random Walker. This is the tutorial. HCR Lab/slash Random Walker, and then. Uh, OK, this part, I'm not sure if this will work, but hopefully it does. So down here, um, it says clone URL. Uh, oops. So anyways, just copy this to your clipboard. Clone URL down here in the bottom right. It's down here. Hopefully this works. I haven't actually tried it. Uh, so. OK, uh, yeah, that's actually not going to work So, because uh, it, it uses SSH keys. So um, sorry, if you if you already did that, then stop what you're doing. So click on um, HTTPS, huh? Oh, OK. Um, yeah, in source. OK, well, if if the, huh? oh, OK, well, if, it, if you're able to, um, if you're able to use this URL, git at github.com, colon, then, then that's great. Um, if not, then click, try clicking on HTTPS and then copying this HTTPS okay. URL. Oh, OK, yeah. And then now you should have this code, random walker. You guys have to take out? Yes. Yeah. 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 You might want to create one. Yeah. Does everyone have the code? Yeah. Yeah? OK. Perfect. So. OK, so in here, um, so let me tell you about like what Random Walker does. So uh, basically, um, OK, so just ignore what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to show you what it's, what's going to look like when you're finished. Um, Oh, OK, sorry. Oops. Uh, OK, so once you have Random Walker, um, okay, um, okay, 
So um, go back to your Catkin workspace by typing uh, cd dot dot. I, okay, sorry. Does everyone know like how to navigate around in Linux? Okay, like like Linux basics, like creating files. Okay, so just go back up to Catkin workspace and then type in Catkin make again. And then, like near the bottom, oh, sorry. Type in catkin make again uh, from from your catkin workspace. So this is actually uh, dependent on your current directory. This command, you have to do it in the the root of your catkin workspace. Everyone got that? Okay, cool. So it's down at the bottom, it should say like built blah 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 tar random walker generate messages. So what this means is that. Um, it basically it looked in your workspace and it found this new package, and then um, in the package I've set it up so that uh, it will it has certain uh, services service definitions and message definitions, um, so it will generate the code in in Python for this. So, so why did it make it? oh, didn't work. Like when I say. Did you source? Uh, I did, yeah. Mm. It's in there. Oh, it, oh, it needs to move for... into source, yeah. Um, OK, so OK, also, um, it, it, was on the, it was on the survey, but maybe I could just do a quick poll. Like, does everyone here know Python? Like, more? Or like, um, OK, what about C++? A little bit? I'm not really seeing responses, like, like <laughs> good responses from people. Like, OK. Um, so I did this in Python because I feel like maybe more people would be familiar with it. So um, OK, so um, OK, so now ignore, ignore what I'm doing. Ignore what I'm doing. Um, um, Okay, so the way that this is going to work is that um, we have this little simulated robot world here. So um, this is this world is basically a ten by ten grid, and then uh, your robot is, starts out in the center of the grid. It's indicated by the uh, R, and then um, just the way that the output is being produced right now is kind of ugly. But um, but basically, you can type in up, down, left, or right to move the robot. So does anyone? Want to suggest a direction? Up. Up. Okay. Oh. Okay. So every every um, every point on this grid has a number. Uh, <laughs> that's a very common uh, feature of our lab. So okay. So every every uh, every square on this grid has a score. So basically, you want to get the highest score possible as you navigate around, um, and you don't know what the scores are, but you can navigate around. And then you have this choice between uh, exploring more and maybe getting a higher score in the future, or exploiting the scores that you've already found. Um, if, if, I, if I visit on stage, then do I know the, uh, the word or the yes, score? Yes, yes, you will, you will know. If I visit, then it will be like turning the number, the 950. Yeah. So now you're, so now, and, and wherever you go, um, it will be added to your, your score. Um, any, any more suggestions? Right. Oh. <laughs> OK. Well, so there, there may be some negative ones, so you got to kind of watch out for that. Um, OK, so this is, what we're, this is what we're going to make. So um, just, um, it, it'll go between negative 10 and 10, actually. It's not, it's not the most well thought out, like, yeah, it's not it's not the most well thought out like anti cheating system, but I mean you're gonna be writing like the internal code for it anyways, so um, okay. So basically there's gonna be three components to it. Uh, they're conveniently highlighted in green. Um, that that you'll that you'll want to modify. So um, and I'll I'll describe the three components for you. Um, also like in the future, uh, if you're like looking at this on your own time, um, there's an extensive uh, README that just I, I copy and pasted some of the comments from the code in here, but um, there's there's extensive documentation on, on what to do. But anyways, there's three there's three components. So first is um, the teleop. So the part where 
you it just asks you to type in up, down, left, or right. So um, basically, what you're doing there is that as, if you type up, it's going to get published to um, a, some topic, basically. So this is called the move command topic. Um, okay, so um, I have to apologize to you guys, but like one thing that you're gonna have to do a lot of um, when you're developing in ROS is that you're gonna have to open up a lot of terminal windows. So um, if you're using PuTTY, basically just open up another uh, instance of PuTTY if you can. Um, you'll probably need like two or three windows for this. But um, so anyways, I'm just gonna repeat the steps to um, log in and we can look at this. Okay, so let me actually, um, let me see if I can get these going at the same time maybe. Uh, Um, okay, yeah, let me, uh... Okay, so, so one of the ROS tools for, um, looking at, uh, what, or one of the ROS tools is called ROS Topic. So ROS Topic is kind of like a Swiss Army knife tool for, uh, topic-related things. So, uh, if you just type in ROS Topic, you can see a list of commands that are available. It'll be better formatted when you're not on like a blown up screen. So um, try. So so um, this won't work for you. But basically, the way that you'll test whether you've implemented teleop correctly, or there, you need to implement teleop. The way you can test that you've uh, implemented it correctly is uh, in another window. You can say ros topic echo slash move command. Then. Um, and then you can launch, um, you can run teleop.py just by saying python teleop.py. And then if you say up, then um, then basically whatever you type here, down, left, right, it should be um, published to the move command topic. And ROS topic echo will just basically, it just listens to this topic and then it just writes out whatever it sees on it. So that's how you'll know it works. I think if you try it with the code that you have right now, it's just gonna like go like it's just gonna explode or something. So, and then um, just use Control D. Remember to use Control D to exit this program in particular. So that's how you'll figure out if it works. Um, okay, so um, so let's let's actually maybe do do this just in, as an example. Um, Okay. Oh, okay. Also, um, ed editors. So, who is familiar with Vim? Who's familiar with Emacs? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> who's familiar with neither of those? Neither? No, yeah, Emacs. Emacs? How about you? Um, I'm really, I mean, I know they are, but I haven't used Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. So, so if, um, so right now, um, yeah, unfortunately, like, like because, <laughs> because, like, because we're doing this over SSH and like everyone's laptop is like different, I just wanted to do it over SSH. And so, um, what you can do um, is that you can use Nano. Oh, actually, the syntax highlighting for free. So, um, so if you use Nano, basically the way you you use it is that you use the arrow keys to move around, and then you can like type stuff, and then um, to um, to save and exit. I think you say Control O to save and enter, and then Control X to exit. The commands are listed down at the bottom. Um, write out is save, and then X is exit. So, so this is just like a, a fairly minimal text editing program. Um, but anyways, I, I'm I'm just going to be using uh, Vim. Hopefully, that's not an issue. Um, or or I mean. Uh, let's look at, uh, uh, okay, so anyways, okay, so at the top of the three files, there's going to be um, a set of steps for um, how to make this program work. So the first thing we're going to do, um, okay, so first of all, um, map server, robot, and teleop. I, 
I, I forgot to explain these. So teleop is just, it reads in keyboard input and then it sends commands. Um, map server, basically it generates the map. Uh, it's just like a 2D array of numbers, basically of random numbers. And then it's gonna provide a service. So you call the service to get uh, with a particular location and then it's gonna return the score for that service. So the, the last thing is gonna be robot.py. So robot.py ties it all together. Um, you control the robot, or the robot is gonna listen on the move command topic to get the command as to which direction to go. And then as it moves to a location, it's gonna update its position and it's gonna call the uh, get score service to get the score for that point. And then it's gonna add it to its current score. And then it's gonna it's gonna draw the map so uh, for for you to visualize. So um, those are the three components. Um, so maybe we can draw diagrams of the three uh, nodes. And yeah. Um, later. Yeah, maybe maybe later. Um, okay. So so the first thing to do is that if you want to make something into a node. Um, Using um, oh, M is very weird. Okay, so uh, one thing you'll need is Rospy. So this is a library that um, you'll download. Like when you install Ros, you'll you'll get this library called Rospy. So you want to say import Rospy, oh. and then um, in the main function, one of the first things you'll want to do is to say uh, rospy.init node. Yeah. And this basically makes your program into a ROS node. That's all you need to do. The, the string is arbitrary, you name it? Yes, you can give it any name that you want. Um, you do, sorry, what? As long as it's unique, yeah. Um, yeah, and it turns out if you have um, two nodes with the same name, then uh, whichever one was uh, brought up earlier will be killed, and then the new one will live. So um, that's kind of an undesirable behavior. You kind of have to design things to such that all the things that you want to stay alive all the time have to have unique names. Spaces instead of caps instead of tabs. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter as long as the alignment is correct in Python. I think. Okay, so so this is just one line of code here, rospy.init node. So this basically creates, this makes your program into a ros node. It's going to register with the ros master, and and that that's cool. Like the ros master knows about you, but you don't do anything yet, right? Like you don't publish to anything, you don't subscribe to anything. Um, okay, so now uh, we're going to create a publisher. So here, where it says command publisher equals none. I'm going to go ahead and change that to raspi dot. OK, so uh, I don't actually remember. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tutorials. Um, and, and the links for these are referenced um, above here, multiple resources. Um, so the tutorial is actually this thing right here. So if you just click on it, it might show up. If you click on tutorials and then you click on writing a simple publisher and subscriber Python, then it'll bring up the same page. So what you do is that you scroll down and then you can see they have a basically simple example of how to write a publisher. So again, um, import rospy, you see that there? Sorry, is this too small? Okay. Um, okay, so here you see, it, you see um, the way that you make a publisher is that you say rospy publisher um, this first thing, chatter, is the name of the topic that you want to publish to. The second thing is the type. Um, so capital string is actually a ROS message type called string. Uh, so don't get confused by that. And then that's really it. You don't need to worry about this last one. So let's go ahead and uh, basically uh, copy that code. So where we said command publisher equals none, change that to ROS by publisher. And then here we want to publish on what topic? Hmm? Move command. Yeah, perfect. Move command. Ah. 
boot command, and then what's the type? Uh, oh, actually, you guys don't know the type. It's string. Or it says the type up here, string. Now, um, don't forget to import the string message class. So um, the string isn't like a Python thing. It's it's a rods thing. So you need to import it. So say from standard messages, dot message, import string. OK. And if you, if you are lost on that, um, just refer back to the tutorial. So here, you can see they have the same thing from standard messages dot message import string, and then um, and then here you publish the move command instead of chatter. Okay, so now you've done that. Um, so then now there's there's this question: uh, Do you need to call rospy dot spin? So we haven't talked about this yet, but basically the answer is no. Um, so Basically, there's this uh, command in the tutorial called, oh, it's actually not here, but um, so, so in, other, um, in other programs, you might want to call rospy.spin as the last command of your node. Um, what that does is basically, like, when you create, like, a publisher or a subscriber, the actual code for doing that is, like, instantaneous, right? Like, you create the publisher, and then there's no more commands to run, so then your program exits, right? But you actually want your program to stay alive and listen for stuff um, that just hasn't happened yet, right? So in that case, you call rospy.spin. It basically just leaves your program running all the time until you until you kill it manually. Um, so in this case, you don't actually need it because this is a teleop thing. So it's just gonna there's an infinite loop here that basically prompts you like, do you want to go up? Do you want to go down? And it's just infinite. So you're just you don't need to worry about your program closing on you prematurely. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's two seven. I'm assuming, um, and and Roz and generally generally doesn't use Python three. Yeah, um, but but yeah, I, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but uh, you can get at least like some of the, the nice things about Python three, like by saying from future import um, like print function. Uh, or division, which basically gives you the, um, the floating point division semantics and, and so on. So there's like a few things that you can do. From Anyways, um, okay. So so basically the answer is uh, no. Um, Okay, so now the last thing we need to do, really, it looks like, is that we actually need to publish the command that we get um, when when someone types something. So here we have command equals raw input, and then uh, if the command is not a valid command, like if it's not up down, then we just we just skip it basically. So now, how do we publish the command? So let's take a look here. Uh, so we're back here in the tutorial, writing publisher subscriber. And it looks like what you do is that you just say pub.publish uh, and then the string. So we'll do that. Say, and our thing is called command publisher. So we'll say command publisher.publish and then the string that we want to publish, which is just command cmd. Does everyone have that? Does that does that make sense? Like, you get this is like the simplest thing like, you can possibly do. I think so. Um, okay. So I'm just gonna quit this for now. Um, and now let's see what happens. Uh, I'll start up in another terminal. Roz topic echo move command. And then in this one, I'll take my thing that I just wrote, and I'll say teleop.py. Type up, down, left, right. What happens if I type uh, something completely random, like Rosie? Nothing happens. OK. So if you have that, then you have a working teleop, at least. So 
Oh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, but um, yeah. So right now, everyone is connected to the same ROS master. So um, that's that. I did not. I, I did not think about that beforehand. So so I'm actually getting like all these commands from from everyone else also. Um, Um, it's just it's just some program on some computer, and then when you start up your program, um, or the way that ROS works is that it uses this environment variable that, that tells you which ROS master to connect to. Yeah. Yeah. And um, in this case, the ROS master is located on this computer, Wally, which is just my computer over there. Um, so. Uh, Okay, so how to how to fix this issue? Um, we can, huh? Or oh yeah. Or you can just prefix everybody's topic. You don't want to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. So. So. Yeah. No. Actually, actually, no. You you shouldn't do that. Um. I think, like, you want your code to be kind of agnostic to to who you are. Like, if someone takes your code and downloads it, you don't want them to have to change it. Um, so, ROS supports um, a lot of configurability of these things. So, um, these topic names aren't really set in stone. So, what you can actually do is that you can say. Um, so, so if you use ROS, so ROS um, ROS has this command called ROS run, which will locate an executable somewhere in your file system given a package. So here, the, the syntax is ROS run, and then package name, and then executable name. So here, the package name is random walker, and then the executable name is teleop. So this is how you normally would run it, instead of saying Python blah directly. You would say uh, Python blah, blah, blah. OK. So what's the package? Um, package is a logical unit of of code that provides some functionality that uh, it can it can basically yeah it's it's like it's just like a logical collection of code. Uh, but it's practically it's like a directory on their source. Or yes. So so um, yeah, every every package um, is going to be whatever is going to be a directory under source. Um, there's some complications, like there's this thing called meta packages, um, but uh, we we won't talk about that now. Okay, so so what you can do to to reconfigure this is that if you use ROS run, you can say uh, you can sort of change the names of topics dynamically. So you can say move command is equal to Justin move command or something like that, or maybe uh, Justin slash move command. Now, um, if I say up, nothing appears over here. But if I instead echo slash Justin slash me, Bash things. Okay, so now if I say that, then yeah. so basically I can change move command to Justin move command uh, without having to change my code. Um, so uh, anyways, that's that's kind of annoying, but basically uh, just don't worry about it for now. Um, okay, so you've written a publisher. So uh, the process for implementing a subscriber is described on the same page. Um, we're we're kind of running out of time, I guess. So so, but it it really couldn't be simpler. Uh, basically, you do the same thing. Um, so so, raspy init node only needs to be done once per program, like per executable that you want to create. So you don't need to say this every time you you do a subscriber. Um, but anyways, the way you do it is that you simply say subscriber, what you'd like to subscribe to, the type of that topic. And then some function that will be called when uh, when a message is received on that topic. 
then here, um, so here is the definition of that function, and then um, uh, the the data will be contained in the message. Um, if you look at standard messages uh, string, you'll find out that actually the string data is stored in a field called data. So that's why you have to say dot data to get the string data out of here. Um, so, and the way you can find that out is by uh, googling standard messages string. Hopefully, and then you'll see the definition here. Um, and if you can't find it on Google, then th there's a way to do it over the command line using this command called ros message. So again, you can say ros message. Uh, yeah, we might go into this more uh, later. Uh, this is not a very good explanation. So. Um, OK, so then um, there's also a map server dot pi. And what map server does is that well, we'll just take a quick look at it. But basically, um, this is going to expose a service. So if you want to find out how to implement a service, go to the tutorials and find writing a simple service uh, and client. And um, so service uh, has two parts, right? So there's the, um, there's the server that provides the service, and then there's clients which call the service. Um, so, um, so here in the map server, basically, um, in the main function, you just need to do this simple thing like init node and then call spin also. And that's basically uh, that, that tells you to do that right there. Um, now in uh, map server, what you need to do is that you need to implement the server. So here uh, it says create a RosPy service. So just look here and see like how they go about creating it. It's actually very simple. It's, it's almost the same thing as like publishers and subscribers. Name, type, and then a callback to handle the, uh, the request. Um, so in, the, in this case, um, the type of the service Um, if you look in Random Walker, there's this folder called SRV. Um, that is where your service definitions go. So if you take a look at them, um, I've already written these, and like we'll probably talk more about it, or you can learn about it through the tutorials on your own. Um, but basically, there's going to be two services. One is, you know, given a row and a column, what's the score? So the inputs and outputs are separated by three dash three dashes, and then get bounds. It takes no input, so there's nothing about the three dashes. And then it returns the number of rows and columns in the world. So that's the second service you need to implement. Um, OK. So and then the last part is the robot. So, uh, so again, it has a main function. Just call init node and spin. And um, get world. Basically, you need to know like what the size of the world is. And then you're going to take the size uh, and just fill in the row and the column here instead of none and none. So um, and then all of this code, you don't need to change. If you don't see a to-do, then you don't need to change it. Uh, but basically, when you move, um, it's going to check, like, am I going off the edge? And if so, then it doesn't let you. Um, but otherwise, it changes the robot's position. And then the robot is going to call this function called sense, which basically uh, its responsibility is to get the score for the current uh, location and then to update the score. So to get the score, um, you're going to call this function called get score, um, where you'll call the get, the get score service. So if you want to learn how to call a service, it's also down here in the service client tutorial. And then you'll return the result. So so it's really only a few lines of code that you need to implement here, even though this is like the biggest file. So OK, now, um, OK, so we're kind of out of time. So you guys can like work on this. I, I definitely recommend reading um, the tutorials to, to figure out. Like the tutorials give you minimal examples of how to do everything. 
Um, and so you can sort of like take those tutorials and adapt them. Um, I'd recommend um, going from like, at least for the purposes of, um, at least for the purposes of, of this, like, uh, I probably should have thought about this more, but it, like, yeah, probably like one through 14, but then you can skip uh, eight and uh, nine and 11 and thir and, and all the C++ related stuff, but. We can send it. Yeah, uh, we talk about it later. Okay. Like a lot of them, you just read them, and you don't actually have to do that part. You'll just read it. And you'll be like, yeah. "Oh, this is clear to me how this works." Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of stuff there, but they're actually mostly really short. Yeah, they're very short tutorials. And then um, the last thing I want to tell you, since we're completely out of time, is uh, that if you get stuck, and uh, first of all, you should probably just ask one of us. Like, if you're here, you can just grab somebody and ask for help, or you can email somebody. Um, we're happy to respond, but if you are in like a really desperate moment and uh, it's like three in the morning and no one has responded to your emails, your your three emails, um, you can go back to the GitHub and then you can click on um, where it says branch master. Just click on finished, and then finished will have the full um, implementation of of everything. Uh, like like this used to not be here. This used to not be here. So, so finished has all the stuff, and you should be able to just run it. Um, uh, yeah. So, okay. Apologies about that. Really quick. Uh, last part. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is normally we just like send you guys the list of tutorials and say, okay, look at this, and you know, see if you have any questions. I think Justin did a really nice job of sort of creating.